Hello, everyone. I recognize many faces here, so I think many of you know me, but for those that don't, I'm Gord Jewett. I'm a neuromuscular fellow in the clinic here uh, and also an ALS researcher. And I'm going to talk a little bit about stem cell therapy in ALS. This is something that comes up often and has been really in the news of the, over the last few years, so uh, something we thought you'd enjoy hearing more about. I do have a couple disclosures, so I'm on medical advisory board for Amelix, and then I also have research support from CIHR, ALS Canada, as well as Amelix Pharmaceuticals. So I'll start out with what are stem cells. I'll assume people don't know a lot about the biology here. If you do know a lot about the biology, I apologize for starting and keeping it basic, but I want everyone to be able to access this information equally. And so stem cells are, are essentially these baby cells and they have the ability to regenerate and self-renew and they can also turn into any other kinds of cells in the body. And so the most basic kind of stem cell is an embryonic stem cell and we all started out as embryonic stem cells and then those cells can turn into different parts of our body like bones, brains, neurons uh, and the supporting structures around the brain as well. And so the next question is what is stem cell therapy? And in its basic form, it, it's pretty simple. You take stem cells, some kind of stem cell, and you put them into a human or a person with some part of their body with a disease, and you try and regrow diseased parts of that body or replace those diseased tissues. And so you, the most common use of this in medicine, where we've had it for many, many years, is in treating blood cancers like leukemia and lymphoma where we give chemotherapy to sort of wipe out the bone marrow in those people who have bad bone marrow, and then you give them stem cells to replace that. And so when you do this kind of therapy, there's a lot of things you can change to either make it work or not work in any situation. And one of those is where you get stem cells. So you can get stem cells from embryo tissue, which is very controversial um, and also hard to access. We all also have stem cells in us. So it, within our tissue, we've learned that we have sort of adult stem cells that aren't quite as good at becoming any other cell, but they do a pretty good job of differentiating and turning into different cell types. And now there's even ways they can take cells, adult cells, and engineer them backwards to become more like stem cells. And so there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And then there's also a lot of different ways you can put stem cells into a person. And so those are two big factors that change how this therapy works um, and is, is a big part of the research that's happened with stem cell therapy. So the next question is stem cell therapy in ALS and how could it be helpful there? And so as you all know, the, the structure that is diseased in ALS is the neuron. And so the most basic way to do this would be to grow new neurons and have them connect. And the early research, which was in animal models of ALS, did exactly that. So they would take stem cells, they would place them within the central nervous system, like the spinal cord of the brain, and they would allow them to grow new neurons. But neurons have really complex, long tails and connections in our bodies, and so it's not as simple as just putting that stem cell there and having it turn into a functional neuron. And so that was a big challenge in those animals. So they could get neurons to grow, but they couldn't get those neurons to connect with all the other neurons and become meaningful. The other way you can do this is to grow supporting cells around the neurons. And so on this slide, I realize it's small for you, but there's two kinds of cells here called astrocytes and oligodendrocytes. And there's other types of cells that are really there just to nourish and support neurons. And so if you could add new cells of that type or send some of the signaling molecules that they make to neurons, you can also help nourish and protect neurons. And there's some evidence that in ALS, as neurons get disease, these other supporting cells also carry a bigger brunt of function and also have some disease in themselves. And so in ALS, those are, those are all possible ways to, to treat the disease. And it all comes back to where do you get those stem cells what kind of stem cells would you use, and how do you actually give them to a patient or a person with ALS? And so that's talking about the basic science, but I'll fast forward a little bit to what evidence we have currently in ALS. And there's been lots and lots of trials in, in patients with ALS uh, to, to see how stem cells can be effective. And the majority of those are early studies, so phase one or two studies, where the main focus is trying to make sure it's safe uh, and tolerable, and the secondary focus is to see if they work. 
This is the one phase three. Sorry, did screens go blank back there? No, good, just my screen. Um, so this is the one phase three study that is the most commonly discussed now uh, because it was a big, well done study. Um, and this was the name in the top right corner of this slide is Neuron. And so that's a name you'll hear. It's a brand name for this technique. And so it's the thing you'll see in the media and uh, on the stock market as, as they try to monetize and, and make something meaningful of this therapy. And so what they did is they did bone marrow biopsies in someone with ALS. So they would take bone marrow with a biopsy, which is a relatively simple procedure. They would find stem cells from that, from that bone marrow. So they're called mesenchymal stem cells. And then they would do something that they haven't told us a lot about. It's, that's the secret of their treatment to make them give off what are called neurotrophic factors. So these are communication molecules that go to other neurons and help nourish them and encourage them to repair and grow. So when they, once they had done that and sort of modified these stem cells, they would then give them back to participants. And they did that with a lumbar puncture or a spinal tap, and they would inject them in there. And they did this three times throughout the study every two months. And that was, they then looked at the progression of disease in people who had that treatment versus ones that didn't get stem cells. So everyone in the study got those spinal taps, but some didn't get stem cells. Those were the placebo group. And so they showed a few things in the study. The first is it's pretty safe and well tolerated. So most of the adverse events or the complications in, these, in this study was back pain and headache and things related to the lumbar puncture itself. People who got the stem cells tended to have a little bit more of an unwell feeling, some fevers or feverish feeling and headaches after the treatment that would eventually resolve. And there were no big safety concerns in terms of people's well-being from, from the study itself. Unfortunately, it was a negative study. So their goal here, obviously, is to slow down disease progression. And when they compared the placebo group to the active treatment group, there was no significant slowing of the disease there. And the other thing they looked at is when you look in the, the spinal fluid in the blood to see if markers of neuron damage went lower, which you would want to see if treatment is affected or effective, there was no significant lowering of those markers as well. So the door is not closed on this. They've done lots of other analysis to see if there was groups in there that may have been effective, more effective than others. Um, but this is a negative study. And so this has been discussed with the FDA on two occasions. And there's been a lot of advocacy to approve it for or patients that want it. Uh, but it's not approved based on this study. I also just wanted to briefly mention this other study, which is now five years old, which is a very similar study done in Korea. Um, and the reason I bring this up is it, because this treatment is approved for treatment of ALS in Korea. And that's the only place in the world that it's approved by a health governing body. This was a phase two study. So again, their main goal is safety and tolerability, but they also looked at efficacy. But there are a few challenges and I think issues with this study and the biggest is if you got the treatment in this study you had the spinal tap you got stem cells that came from bone marrow but if you didn't get that treatment you didn't get a procedure so you could tell the, whether you had treatment or not your doctors knew if you had treatment your family knew if you had, had treatment and as you can imagine that knowledge can affect the way we evaluate ourselves and the ALS FRS has a subjective component so they did show that in patients who were treated in the first couple months had a slowing of progression. Um, but I think we have to take that result with a grain of, a grain of salt. So it is approved in, in Korea. Um, and I've put a link on this slide and that's to a, a patient's website. It's a blog of an American patient who was in the original study, this first study I showed for Neuron. And then he traveled and paid for his own way to go to Korea and pay for this treatment. Um, it's an interesting read, I think, if anyone's interested about that process and how much it cost him and, and what his impression and experience was with that. And so I'll conclude there and say, currently there's no high quality ev evidence to tell us that stem cell therapy works in ALS, but this is not a closed door. So there's research ongoing, there is different ways that stem cell therapy can be done, and there's ongoing studies, including a phase three study in Korea, looking at their specific treatment that's already approved there. 
And then I'll just finish off by, I think you all probably know this, but the stem cell therapy is not approved yet in the United States or in Canada. Um, the, there are a lot of different places in the world that have advertised stem cell therapy for ALS in Mexico and other countries. And so it's good to be aware of those and really question what the evidence is for them and also how they do stem cell therapy. So there are many different ways it can be done. Um, there's some risk or, or less risk with different ways of conducting the treatment. So people that are looking to sort of pursue those more off-label treatments just need to always ask those critical questions and make sure it's safe and they're doing things that have some evidence to show that it, that it helps. And it, you, anytime you're in the ALS clinic, all the neurologists there are well versed in all of this and happy to talk about it and, and give me more information. And if you find specific things you want to ask about, you can bring those resources and we're happy to look through them and, and try and help you with that critical appraisal of what's out there.